Oh, yeah. <laughs> Are you, uh, can you, can you do, can you do one more sound check? Sound check. I am talking to you. Making... The, the one you were doing a second ago. That, that was a good one. Oh, uh, <laughs> how's it go? You just did uh, four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth upon this continent a new nation conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men and women are created equal. Actually, they didn't believe that all men or women were created equal, but you know. Well, they, it, they must have. They wrote it, was, it down. Oh, uh, yeah. It was, a, it was a good thought <laughs> at yeah, the well, time. It's still working on it, right? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Getting closer every day? Yeah. Well, sometimes it's like two steps forward, one step back, but you know. When in a Babylon. That's a, uh, that's a reggae artist song. Is it? Yeah. Which one? I don't. I don't. Two steps forward, one step back. Oh, no, no. You know how it goes? It goes, it goes one step forward, two steps backward. Down in the Babylon. Uh, something like, I don't know why I can't remember who it is. Anyway, I can't. Oh. It is what it is. It is what it is. What it is. What is it? It's about uh, 11 o'clock on Wednesday, uh, February 23rd, 2022. Yes, it's still a palindrome. Is it? Yeah. 223 22. 223 22. Yep. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah. Yeah, good. Yeah. Unless you're in Europe, it's no longer a palindrome because it's 23 2. 22. Mm, mm, indeed, indeed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is nice, though. The, the sun, I, it's amazing how much time I put into thinking about setup. <laughs> 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 wasn't that bad what no 10, no 20 no, minutes yeah about 20 yeah 20 only because i know what i'm doing i guess yeah but, do you <laughs> well I'm, I'm, the funny thing is i'm gonna go look at this later and be like oh <laughs> <laughs> i'm sure it'll be just fine son i'm sure it'll be just fine so yeah. i wanted to sit down and do this with you because well first of all there's oh. a, there's no there's a number of reasons <laughs> i like the headphones we i should always do this now it makes it more I think, well, I think I should do it more. If I should use, make Garrett do it when we do our Search Bowls Reptiles podcast. He doesn't like the headphones? No, no, no. It's not. I just always opt like, oh, we don't need headphones, but I think it'll be better. I was listening to it because I edit them or I, I, you know, do the camera angle cuts and stuff. And it's like, got it. I think it keeps people from talking over each other if you can hear each other right there in your head. Garrett never talks over you <laughs> or anybody else. <laughs> He's a good guy. He He's is a, a great guy. guy. He's a great guy. That's why I let him talk over yeah. me so much. <laughs> Otherwise, I'd be like, shut up. He's loquacious, and this is nothing wrong with that. Mm, loquacious. Yeah. Did we talk about this before? We did. The loquat? Uh-huh. Yeah, but lo- there's no relation. <laughs> there's no, just happens to have the same <laughs> six-letter yeah. start, L-O-Q-A-T. Yeah, yeah. It's a fruit, <laughs> and it's, uh, it's an adjective. No relation whatsoever. It's like rest and rest. What? Well, they're the exact same words, oh, but but they mean absolutely not the same thing. Yeah, like I'm gonna I'm gonna have the rest of this, uh huh, or and I'm gonna take a rest. That's right, right. I, I'm trying to draw a conclusion in my head right now as to how I can tie them together, <laughs> and I will if I think about it long L- enough. <laughs> Loquacious and loquat? No, no, rest and rest. Oh. <laughs> so if uh, if you're done and you're you're done eating, then you can have the rest, and I'll right. I'll, I'll take a rest while you have the rest. Ah, or. You know, the baby got you up, and you're going to go finish the rest of your rest. Yeah, <laughs> see? See? Told you. <laughs> N- knew I could make it work. No, no, okay. there, was, there was a couple reasons. Uh, a, I sat down here and did this with Corey last year. Oh, yes. We should have used the headphones. And I wanted to test it out again, maybe do it a little better than I did last time. <laughs> it's fine. Anyway, go on. Also, I... You know, the, the the honor your father thing just recently. Yes. Yes, and I I felt like I felt like man, I, I wonder if mom feels left out of oh, me. <laughs> not at all, not at all. I thought that was I thought that was perfect because you know we should honor the people while they're there rather than when they're gone and you can't say anything to them anymore. Well, maybe they're listening. Who knows? But you can't say anything to their face. And you know, I've had that experience. You know, recently with my brother passing. So. 
quickly. It's like, but I have things to say to you. <laughs> Where did you go? Anyway, so I think there's nothing wrong with doing that. I think we should like honor people before they go, not after they're gone. I, I, I firmly believe that. Yeah. So no, I didn't feel left out at all. Aunt Lynn did, but I... <laughs> There's always there's always somebody who's going to feel left out no matter what. It doesn't matter what you do, somebody's going to feel left out. I've, I've come to realize that and not not let it affect me too much. I still try to think about it. Like, oh, man, who's going to feel left out? Right? It's because somebody always is going to. Yeah. It doesn't you matter what you do. Can't make everybody happy all the time. No. Nah, yeah. It's just exactly. not, not without driving yourself absolutely nuts. Yeah, exactly. And then ruin your own happiness. And yeah. It's like, gosh. What? So I didn't feel left out. Plus, I figured... I would get something at some point. <laughs> Maybe a eulogy or something, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, once once you're gone, we'll talk about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And maybe I don't want to hear what people think. <laughs> oh, come on, Mom. I, that's the perfect thing. That's that's C. That's three. Three. That's the third thing I'd like to talk to you about because everybody I know that knows you recognizes your exceptional character. Uh-oh. So I'm just kind of wondering what you attribute that to like what what i I know a bit of your history i know how kind of how you grew up yeah i know some different things that you've experienced there's it seems the the thing i've arrived to when speaking with a bunch of other people as far as what is what builds character it seems to be uh more often than not or almost 100 percent of the time dealing with crises dealing with crisis, overcoming um, some kind of adversity. It seems to be the tying together char- factor of what, what really builds character. So, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yeah. so since people, everybody I know that's ever talked about you ever, whether you're not there, <laughs> which, whether it's a friend, whether it's your peers, whether it's literally anybody else that ever talks about you, just always has something to remark about your exceptional character. Oh, that's that's really nice. Okay, <laughs> you don't have to say anything else. <laughs> I'm perfectly happy with that. Okay. Um, so what are you asking? I'm asking what you attribute that to. Like if, if you could, if you know, apparently you're not as aware as other people are about your exceptional character. So I'm wondering if, you, but if you have, <laughs> have anything that you can attribute to any, anything that you, anything that was something that you went through growing up or, you know, like what, what attributes to everybody else around you feeling like you have exceptional character? Uh, wow. Uh, I don't feel like I had any horrible experience or bad, you know, neg- negative experience that I had. You know what I mean? I, I Growing up, my, our parent, my parents were immigrants to the United States and we settled in L.A. We didn't have a lot of money. You know, my parents worked hard. They, my dad worked in the post office. My mom ended up working in the post office, too, even though she was a first grade teacher. Anyhow, um, so money was tight. Um, so that was probably a, a challenge, and so I'm sure that affects me now because I'm uh, money is money's not so as tight as it was when you know when you guys were growing up. Um, but I still am careful about my money. Um, that has nothing to do with my character, but it, <laughs> it might play a, a, a little bit small piece. But I think my my both my parents had a huge influence on on what I believe and what I think is important, and. Like Grandma Maria, my mom always said that family is important. Your brothers are important. You might not think of it now, but they're going to be important later in your life. And even though they were teasing me and making fun of my neck and and <laughs> calling me honey when I didn't really want to be called honey, um, you know, they were. I I I embraced that that my parent that family is super important, and so. When we had our own family, I tried my best. I can't say I was perfect, as <laughs> as you all know, um, to maintain that importance that family is the core. Even now that I'm retired, um, you know, when I was working, I was working hard, all that stuff. <clears throat> and um, now that I'm retired, I don't have a career that I'm focused on so or any any particular purpose. So for me, I had to identify a purpose for myself. Um, and for me, my purpose is family. That's how can I support my family, continue to support my family. Um, I think that's huge. So, and does that answer your question? No, not really. <laughs> it, it, I mean, you're, you're answering it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, 
I think my parents had a huge influence on what my values are. I didn't embrace everything that they believed in. They're both ca- raised Catholic. I was raised Catholic, but I didn't embrace that, and I still don't embrace Catholic Catholicism. Yeah, me neither. Yeah, right. Uh, yeah, yeah. Understandably, <laughs> um, but the values that are part of that, you know, um, putting someone else ahead of you, or I don't know, it makes me feel good to help people. And maybe that's why I ended up in a in a teaching kind of in a in education, because one thing I believed in was uh, child development and how important that is, and I felt that as a teacher I was able to help kids um, learn and grow and not just learn how to read and write but also how to negotiate in a group or how to deal with problems and so on. And um, I feel like I'm still doing that with family, and I I feel like I kind of did that with family all along. Raising you guys. <laughs> we never caused any problems. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> oh, just wait. <laughs> it's coming. I'm, no, no, no. I'm being facetious, obviously. I, I know. <laughs> I'm well aware that I caused quite a problem or two. <laughs> and that was that was uh, that was a challenge, also raising raising the three of you. That was probably one of the hardest things I had to do. Was you know how do I you know, keep on loving you guys and try. (laughs) (laughs) After all this, how could I possibly still love them? (laughs) I know. It's like, what are they doing and why? (laughs) And okay, what? (laughs) But yeah, it it wasn't a, because you get to a point as kids you're making decisions, and, and my influence is in his strong. And I saw that pretty early on. <laughs> I can remember the first time. I can actually remember the first time I got frustrated with you. I think you were like two. <laughs> Don't remember that one. Yeah, good. And I went into the bathroom, and I was like, what happened to me? I, I, I'm usually calm. <laughs> I don't have a temper. <laughs> I just lost it <laughs> on a two-year-old. How is that possible? <laughs> so, um, wow, that's uh, that's enlightening. Is it? Yeah, <laughs> it it is actually. <laughs> I, I when I ask the question, I'm thinking back to like things in your childhood. You know, you're growing growing up like fairly poor. Um, you know, dealing with any with the struggles of living in L.A. in the '70s. You know, I'm yeah. sure that was <laughs> in Echo Park. Yeah. Uh, uh, I, Orale pues, banzai. So I, I, but no, but no, a two-year-old. That was the, that was the turning point. That was the real character-building moment. Two, two-year-old in the house. <laughs> Ask any parent of a two-year-old, Brian. No. <laughs> no, fair, fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, growing up, I as a child, I loved school. I loved playing. That we. We lived in a great neighborhood. We ran outside and played all the time. And it, Are we still talking about Echo Park? Yeah, I guess so. We're back to Echo Park. But I think, I mean, just to illustrate that I didn't have huge challenges growing up, I don't think. Maybe I was oblivious. Because sometimes I can be oblivious to things. I, yes, I'm yes. well aware. <laughs> <laughs> oh, anyway. <laughs> or, anyway, I... I can be very oblivious. I remember one time when I was working at the second elementary school I worked at, I guess the principal yelled at me as long as well as yelling at other people, but I was included in that being yelled at. And it's like, he did? <laughs> oh, how about that? Well, if I'd known that I'd have uh, said something, probably not, but, um, but yeah, I mean, I liked high school. I enjoyed my time there. I, was a good little girl. I didn't get in any trouble. My brothers got in a little bit of trouble here and there. Nothing bad. Um, but I was a good little girl. I did what my parents wanted me to do. They wanted me to go to college, and I went. <laughs> I didn't marry the nice Filipino boy because I didn't find one that I liked. I happened to run into your dad. and Well, I didn't run into him. I, you know, <laughs> got to know your dad and decided, well, that's good. <laughs> this works for me. Pretty early on. It was like a couple of months in. It's like, okay. All right, let's move on now. <laughs> yeah, it works for me, too. <laughs> yeah, it worked out well for you guys, yeah, I think. I yeah. think so, too. Well, I mean, j- even just genetically speaking, honestly, like, because the, the more you can, like, cross across different 
uh, borders. You get you tend to the genetics tend to go towards what's strongest. They pull the strongest traits from. Um, I'm getting scientific on it now, but they yeah. pull the strongest traits from whatever the, the diverse, the diverser, more diverse genetics are. Yeah. Tend to pull like, well, this really works and this really works. It doesn't always happen. It's not like it's perfect or it's like we're only going to take the good things here and the good things here. Sometimes there's just stuff that doesn't make it through. But generally speaking, it does it does work that way. If you yeah. have more distantly, more distant genetics, you yes. know, um, genetically speaking, going back at genetic history, yes. then it tends the the offspring tend to pull more of the positive from each one um just physical strengths maybe maybe all strengths that's why that's why you end up with like problems when people start inbreeding yes 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 we did definitely did not inbreed (laughs) and uh i ended up with three perfect kids I had a fourth one, but it was like, eh, no. <laughs> yeah, it's funny because I'm in a similar, but maybe because I grew up with three siblings I'm, or two siblings, yeah. I'm well aware of how that dynamic works. And we've talked about a fourth, you know, on, from time to time, kind of like mm-hmm. in, in a way like, oh, if we can guarantee. We're actually just hanging out with the baby last Sunday. Um, that was awesome. You know, she just like kind of sat on me and then like put her head on my shoulder. I was like, oh. and I'm like well, if we can guarantee one of these right here. <laughs> <laughs> Which I know you can kind of do these days, like you can pick your gender, or whatever. Uh, pick, pick, uh, but well, I don't know if we. I don't think we want to take it that far. Are you thinking uh, if you had another one, you'd like another girl? A uh, girl. A girl that if we could basically uh, make a clone of Leia, mm-hmm. that would be ideal. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But you want a quiet baby, also. Is that what you're saying, or you want a girl? <laughs> a, a girl. A, a girl. Okay. A, yeah. That yeah. is a, a sweet girl. That, mm-hmm. Yeah. Embraces princess values. And- <laughs> well, with a sister like Leia, that's that's a guarantee. <laughs> yeah. No guarantees in life, Bob. That's no true. That's true. Well, my parents, supposedly, that's their story, is that they kept having babies until they had a girl. So that's why I have four older brothers, and they just kept having one until they had a girl that they could name Marfell for some weird reason. <laughs> no, not weird. But that's what that's the story they told me. Well, they also told me that the they picked me up in the ocean. I was floating in the ocean as my mom and four brothers were coming across on the boat. Um, they picked me up in the ocean. <laughs> because I was born nine months later, my dad came here to San Francisco. He you know, arrived in San Francisco a few months ahead of my mom and my four brothers. And then my mom and my four brothers came on the USS Wilson. Um, so, so they were fresh off the boat, actually. <laughs> And uh, they picked me up along the way because I was born exactly nine months later, after uh, after my mom and brothers arrived. <laughs> so makes that makes sense. total sense. Definitely makes makes a lot of yeah. sense. They were, they were apart for what did you say like four months or something. What's that? Four months. He came ahead of time. Maybe. Okay. Something so, yeah. like that. Yeah. Any, yeah. any amount of months, really. I think. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Long enough. And then I was nine months. They came in October. I was born in July. So, yeah. So they were. <laughs> Great. Great. Yeah. Yeah, but I, that's all I can, I mean, I don't know. My parents, I think, were huge, uh, my brothers, actually, were a huge influence on me, uh, for better, for worse. <laughs> I'm missing somebody. Anyway, um, uh, Uncle Ralph was a huge influence on me growing up. When he came back from, he served in Vietnam, and we came back, and he got married to Aunt Emily, and... Um, he just taught me a lot of lessons about how to be grateful because I was like, I think I was kind of a spoiled brat, probably. I know I was a spoiled brat <laughs> and I wasn't grateful for certain things. And he said he would do exactly what you do with Noah <laughs> and your kids. Like, are you going to say something? Thank you. <laughs> and they were... Um, Uncle Ralph and Aunt Emily were a huge influence um, on how to love a partner, how to be in a marriage, how to honor that person and lift that person up. And not perfect, but who is? He is not. I am not. <laughs> we are not. They do, but, they do a pretty good job. I, I always think about going to their house and how they always treat everybody like family that comes to the door. Yep. Always. Always. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. And that's another thing that um, I feel that they taught me also is how to treat other people and how it it comes back to you, you know, how it makes you feel good about that too. So, and then Uncle Phil, he taught me about, you know, making decisions in life about uh, education, career, all that sort of stuff. So he was my my mentor there. So, yeah, I see my huge, my family was huge in uh, 
influencing me. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. I, think, I, mean, I, I mean, I don't know what else. Uh, no, that's good. Yeah. That's good. I, I just, uh, no, I'm not, I, I, you've given as much as I've asked for at this point. Oh. <laughs> was that all three things? That was all three things. Yeah. The third thing was the biggest thing. And that was basically it. I yeah. mean, I had that little moment of enlightenment there where you, <laughs> <laughs> that of all the things that I know you've been through, some of which you didn't necessarily talk about today, the, the one, one of the big ones was just having, having a two-year-old. <laughs> 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 which, I mean, it's a strong point. It's a strong point. I've had many, I've had several two-year-olds at this point. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So have I. So have I. Yeah. Yeah. And you just, you know, keep doing your best with, um, try to raise them <laughs> and hope you did a decent job. And I, I think, I think we did. I think you guys are good people, solid people who are generous and thoughtful and, you know, try to do the right thing. You work hard and, uh, yeah, that, that, that worked out for us pretty well. And we like hanging out with you guys. So <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how I feel about the laugh after that. <laughs> And your kids. Your kids are, you know, solid citizens as well. So Yeah, they're getting there. Yeah, they're getting there. It is a process. It is a process. I don't know when you're done. Maybe ever. never. Maybe never. If you if you if you're doing it right, I think you're never really done. Yeah. You're definitely not done worrying about your kids ever. It's like when you were cutting that wood. Don't cut yourself. <laughs> Be careful. You go on a trip. Be careful. Have a safe trip. Bon yeah, voyage. Yeah, I've gotten plenty of use out of these fingers. <laughs> yeah. So it never ends. It never ends. And it never it won't end. <laughs> so, yeah. And that's, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with that. So. That's probably right where I'm going to cut it. Is it? I mean, yeah. Unless you, unless you want to plug your, uh, you have anything you want to plug? Plug. Oh. <laughs> I plugged Corey's podcast. Oh, here, yeah, I see. Plug. I don't have any um, thing, any kind of venture right now. My venture is just to, my venture is to go, go, because this is our go, go years. Go, go. Yeah, because both dad and I retired. So we're going to go, go and go, go and go see things, do things, hang out with the kids, go travel, go to Ireland, go to wherever we want to do hiking, all that good stuff. Until it's the slow go years, <laughs> and then the slow go years, we'll get a dog maybe and <laughs> hang around the house more. And then the no go years, well, that's up to you. No. <laughs> okay, they're not going. We're gonna make them really go. <laughs> See you later, guys. Bye. No. This is an uncut video, but I'm gonna I'm gonna have to exercise all of my restraint to not take that last <laughs> laugh and just slice it up and make it do all kinds of fun things like I like I've done so many times before. <laughs> <sighs> so yes no I have nothing to plug just be good people who are thoughtful who think who don't just have a narrow path and are not willing to look at other points of view and just think that okay well this is the only thing I'm and I'm right <laughs> that's all I ask keep an open mind because who knows your mind could be changed yep not make, if you close it off tight enough, Mom. <laughs> make good decisions. <laughs> That's it. Perfect. Good. good? Okay. Yeah, great. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. No, thank you. Oh, it's stuck. I'm hot. <laughs> <laughs> I told you it was going to be toasty out here. <laughs> oh. It's okay. Good job. Well done. Thanks for your time. Yeah. You're welcome. Don't trip on anything when you're... There's a lot of cords down by your feet. I see that. Oh, oh I'm speaking. <laughs> I should talk to myself about this. Twist. Twist and shout.